Hello everyone, I am Tynan Sylvester, and this is RimWorld Alpha 15. Yeah, this is the first RimWorld version post uh, Steam release, and I have a bunch of new stuff to show you, and the first thing will actually be a new tutorial and a new tutor system. A number of people have been having a few issues with just sort of getting into the game, and I don't want to have more barriers than are necessary. Uh, during the first hour or two of play, so I decided to create an actual rich full-on tutorial. So I've just started it. You just press the learn to play button on the main menu and it starts giving you instructions one by one Right from generating the world to choosing a world position here. It actually makes you choose a position in a temperate uh, biome So I'm unable to choose one in the tundra or in the arid shrubland uh, Because temperate biome is kind of friendly and a pretty reliable uh, reliable environment to start a tutorial and here we, it will train you to randomize a pawn and uh, so that you actually know how to do that because I've actually noticed some people don't actually see the randomize button so I want to make sure that interaction is known to players and I'm not gonna go through the whole tutorial but I'm just showing it to you here yeah so you randomize your pawn and you can keep doing it and checking out what kind of new guys you get and eventually you will start your colony so here we are on the surface and now the game starts training you in the gameplay interactions. So the first one is just moving the camera. And you can see on the top right, there's a progress bar that shows your progress in learning uh, whatever concept is being learned at the moment. And this is for zooming the camera and then for changing the time speed. So here I'm gonna pause the game and unpause it and then use the space bar and use the keys to uh, change the time speed. And now, now it gets more complicated. The first thing you wanna do is put down a stockpile zone. So as you can see, it'll prevent me from putting a stockpile zone in a uh, spot besides the one that has been specified, but if I exactly match it, then it will place the zone fine Then it teaches you to unforbid your items And yeah, so I'm not gonna finish the tutorial But this is just something to help people get in and pass that first hour or two hump because I've noticed uh, It's not an issue with the depth of the game And I think the mid game is fine once you sort of know what the basics are but uh, there is a bit of a barrier there that's built up over time. What well, didn't used to be there in earlier alphas, but with all the new complexity that's been added over the last uh, two years or so, uh, this has become a problem and it needs to be solved now. So uh, the tutorial will helpfully solve that and give people a bit of an easier starting hook into the game. And that is to make it possible to interact with the, the deep systems, not to dumb anything down. Uh, you know, depth in a game should come from the complexity of the higher level interactions the systems not just from trying to figure out what button to push or what you're even allowed to do expanding on that i've added a learning helper which is a redesign of the old pop-up uh tutor system so the old system would essentially look for opportunities to teach you things and pop up little notes about them but people would tend to click through them or get annoyed with them or they'd get in your way so now i've uh replaced this with the learning helper which you can see there in the top right of the screen. And that's something that's persistent. It's available throughout the entire game. Uh, it'll go away when there's nothing on deck, so to speak. Uh, but when there is a lesson, then it'll be learned. So I'm just gonna initiate the next lesson. And it's forbidding doors. So you'll get this lesson automatically when say manhunters arrive because you need to forbid doors to deal with manhunters. Um, and so here you can see I'm forbidding and unforbidding the door and the lesson's being learned and now it's been learned. So the way this works is that if you've already been forbidding and unforbidding doors before you even saw that, then the game will register that you have actually got the knowledge and you'll never see the lesson. Uh, however, uh, if you haven't and some situation arises where door forbidding would be really useful, like a manhunter group, uh, manhunter pack of animals arriving, then the lesson will be placed on deck and you'll be uh, requested to learn it, or at least given the opportunity to learn it. And the idea is to give players the knowledge they need when they need it, and not try to front load everything, because there's too much to learn in one gigantic tutorial. In addition, as you can see here, you can look up things if you want at any time, any concept. The learned ones are great, but you can still reread them, of course. There is a, uh, a little filter that helps you search the list, and you can look up any old concept or anything that you happen to want to know. So. You know, it's a bit of a dictionary slash encyclopedia as well that helps you, uh, you know, find whatever you're looking for. So that's the new learning systems. All right, so now let's look at a drug colony using the new drug system. Uh, the game has had a drug for quite a while, which is alcohol, of course. 
And that has worked. Uh, you know, your colonists have, and dogs and stuff, as people have discovered, have for a long time been able to get uh, drunk, and that improves their mood, but reduces their functioning, and they end up with hangovers. So it's sort of this uh, win-lose thing. So now I've always had the uh, idea of wanting to expand that, and I was thinking about what I wanted to do in, in this new version, and I, there's a lot of ideas out there for things to do that are interesting purely economically, but I really like to focus on sort of human interest game mechanics in, uh, in RimWorld, because uh, I feel like that's really what distinguishes this game. Uh, so uh, I thought uh, drugs would be a cool one to do. So this is a drug colony. We are making alcohol as well. Uh, as everything else. So um, let's see here. The old um, alcohol production does still work, but it works a little bit differently. Before you would just take hops to the brewing table and just magically make, make beer just straight up like in like five minutes from hops, which, which makes no sense whatsoever. So uh, now you're going to have to actually uh, ferment the beer properly. So I got to watch some YouTube videos about how people actually make beer because I really had no idea. And essentially, they do what NG is doing here, which is take some hops, do some, and other ingredients, which we're skipping, um, do some preparation on them, and then that produces this stuff called wort. Wort is basically this liquid, it's unfermented beer. And from that point, you take that and you put it in a fermenting barrel, which is what NG is doing now. So now you can see the fermenting barrel is there. There's a little progress bar, and that bar will fill up as the barrel gets more full and it'll become brighter yellow as the barrel gets more mature. Uh, this, it is a temperature sensitive process. So as you can see, the, the fermenting temperature is seven to 30 degrees Celsius. So if it goes outside that range, the, it'll slow down or even the wort will be destroyed permanently. And it'll have to be replaced. So you have to wait a couple weeks for your beer and uh, hopefully that will, will add some interest. But as I was mentioning, there are other drugs with other effects as well. So here I'm growing several drug drug producing crops. Uh, this one is smoke leaf, and this one is psychoid. So uh, my character's oh here's Kirini is actually smoking the smoke leaf right now to relax. I think she's using it as a joy gainer. So as with alcohol before, uh, some of the drugs produce uh, a joy gain, which fulfills the colonist's joy need right here. So it's like a sub you know. They can throw horseshoes or go for a walk, but if they want to, they can also smoke drugs uh, just for the, the enjoyment of it. And that fulfills their need. Um, but uh, there are also other use cases for the drugs. Like, um, they can, you can't just order the colonists to take them. Uh, and the colonists will also go on binges sometimes. So, uh, you know, if you have a big pile of, let's see here, yayo, which is this like snortable drug then the colonists will, uh, they freak out, or if they're really sad, instead of going on a berserk rage, they might actually just go and binge themselves on Yayo. And they can end up with overdoses of certain types of drugs and, and harm themselves. Now, not every drug is like a narcotic. Some of them are that I've shown you so far, but uh, there's other various ones, like this one, Luciferium. You got this off a dead raider, just three pills. And this stuff is like this glitter world, super high-tech, mechanite uh, pill that, that makes you guys super strong and super... Uh, you know, their immune system works really well, etc., etc. But once it's taken, there's a permanent addiction and you have to take it forever. Otherwise, you go insane and die. So it's got the, the best effects of any drug. Has no, like, pleasure impact whatsoever. But will uh, will kill people if, if you uh, put them in withdrawal. Now, speaking of addiction, that's also something that's been added. We had alcohol before, but it didn't really have any long-term effects. That has actually been changed now. So... Uh, Characters can build up a tolerance for drugs if they use them for long enough, and eventually they can actually develop an addiction. Some of them can be developed quite quickly for some, some drugs, other ones are slower, there's, diff there's sort of a, a large random element to it as well. But once an addiction is generated, as you can see for uh, Sotero here, actually has alcohol addiction, and that generally won't affect them as long as they have uh, their chemicals, but they develop a new need here. So in addition to food, rest, joy, their usual needs, they, he now has an alcohol need. And uh, if that gets low, then he will go into withdrawal. And that will, in the case of alcohol, uh, tend to reduce his manipulation ability. It'll slow him down. And as in the case of most withdrawals, it reduces their mood quite a bit. So you can push through that, and eventually they will uh, kick the habit, so to speak. But uh, it, can be, it can be dangerous. It can be troublesome. 
And sometimes uh, raiders will come with, with addictions like, you know, these pirate communities are not exactly the most socially healthy places, so they're probably using some pretty, uh, pretty bad stuff there. So, you know, if you capture a pirate, he might come with an addiction to uh, alcohol or, or whatever uh, narcotic it, it randomly generates. And uh, that might make you want to sell him as a, uh, sell him to a trader or just get rid of him. Or, you know, if you really like him, you might want to help him through that. Or you could just uh, sort of feed the addiction and uh, take on the cost of doing that. So I'm hoping there's a lot of trade-offs here. If you do want to run a cleaner colony, uh, you can actually just burn the drugs that might happen to show up at the campfire, which has a burn drugs bill. So you can just get, you can just get rid of them if you want. Um, but they can also be uh, useful in some situations. So it's sort of a, it can be a bit of a, a devil's bargain. Um, but, you know, with the variance of different drugs, I want to see how it turns out. Uh, I've tried to balance them. We've been testing them on, on quite a bit. And uh, so I'm hoping that works out. But, uh, but yeah, so there's sort of an upside and a downside, and I'm hoping it's really human interested. And that'll keep people, uh, keep the focus on the characters and make, make for some interesting stories. This, uh, this also brings into sharper focus those old traits, the chemical traits. So there used to be these, um, uh, nobody has it, the uh, chemical fascination, chemical interest traits, which previously just made your character do more alcohol drinking when it was around, but now uh, it actually has a systematic effect. So you can control what drugs your characters are willing to use or are allowed to use, but you can see Rin has chemical interest, which is marked here. So this is where I manage the sort of policy that the characters are allowed to use drugs under. So this drug policy is these drugs are allowed for uh, like joy and social usage. So beer and smoke leaf and everything else is denied. But if I want, I can also schedule drug use. So you can't use like malaria block, which stops malaria as a joy drug because it has no narcotic effect. And the same with luciferium. But you would set them up on a schedule. So from malaria block, you would say set it up for, they could take one every five days and that will make them immune to malaria permanently. Um, oh, well, as long as they're taking the drug. And so you can set up whatever you want. You know, if you want to have people on Yayo twice a day, or, or if you have a worker that you want to be uh, like awake all the time, you can put them on wake up, which is this sort of stimulant that, that fills the rest need immediately. And tell them to take some wake up every 12 hours, and they will do it. And uh, they will kind of never have to sleep eventually, until you know, eventually it catches up with them. But, uh, but that is a way to, to pump more productivity out of someone temporarily. So there's various different uses for this. You can control and schedule how you want them to use it, or you can just let them use it uh, for joy on their own time or deny it. However, if your colonists have chemical interest, they might be willing to ignore the directives here. They'll be a lot more likely to binge on drugs if they do indeed have a mental break, and uh, they will refuse to ignore drugs that you tell them to ignore in some cases. So chemical interest is... Uh, is a uh, you know, much more impactful and, and broader trait now. As it, it was always meant to be, hence the name. It wasn't just, it wasn't just about uh, beer. So that's the drug system, and I hope you guys like it. So next up is deep drilling. One of the design problems with the game has been that over the really long term, players can build colonies that are several years old, and they'll actually mine out everything on the map. So this is essentially just designed to satisfy that. So I've just cheated and gotten the late stage deep drilling research. And now that reveals the deep drill and the ground penetrating scanner. So I'm going to use cheat commands and build a ground penetrating scanner right here. And then uh, attach some power to it. And it's going to reveal underground reserves of resources as soon as it's powered up. So you select it and they're highlighted. You can't tell what they are, but you can just tell there's something there that you can drill out that's not just trash rock. And this gives you the opportunity to build a deep drill on top of these resource lumps and start extracting it. So here I'm going to build a deep drill. I, I am going to uh, cheat just to make it happen. It will extract materials from anywhere within one cell of itself, so that, that three by three cell area. So if you really want to get every square of, of resource, you have to cover the entire green, uh, green field with it. So there it is. And it looks like the resource below is uranium. So I'm just going to have some of my colonists actually work at it. Shiro is coming to use the deep drill and he's working at it. And as you can see on the inspect pane, the progress to the next lump is increasing. Uh, he's taking a break. Starl's overdosing because of the drug policy applied earlier. However, the hero, Linda, is working the deep drill further 
and the lump has completed. So, as you can see, there's the uranium that was produced. 50 uranium popped out, and there's a little bit less uranium under the ground. Each underground square generally has 500 uh, resources, and you can see them deplete. They change color. Uh, if you look in the square that the drill was on top of, it's just slightly less green. So you will be able to see them deplete over time when uh, when you're actually drilling these. So that should hopefully provide a long-term late-game source of steel and other important minerals uh, without essentially just blocking and forcing players to wait for traders forever. One other small but potentially important addition is the passive cooler. One of the problems we had before was that tribal starts had a ton of trouble dealing with heat waves if they didn't have coolers to actually cool the base because everyone would just get heat stroke and there's no way to avoid it. So now I've added the passive cooler, which is sort of based on an evaporative cooler, a traditional uh, form of cooling that's really based on just evaporating water from a mesh or something like that. And uh, they build it out of wood and you put it down and it cools the room. So I just built it in the freezer and it won't actually cool anything because it's already below zero. It can't create a freezing effect, it's too cold. It only goes down to a certain temperature. But what it can do is refrigerate rooms that are uh, uncomfortably warm. So I'm gonna put some in this room which has a bunch of torches and is a little bit, a little bit uh, too, too hot. You can see it's at 23 degrees in the bottom right, you can see in the mouse over uh, readout. And that's because of these torches here. And it's not going down because the torches are putting out more heat than the one cooler. So I'm just gonna cheat and build a copy of this cooler. Uh, instead of having to go to the architect menu, now you can just select an item and press the O button to uh, start building copies of that. So I'm gonna use that tool. It's just a little bit of a, a quality of life improvement and cheat and build a bunch of extra coolers. And now you can see the temperature has quickly fallen to 15 degrees Celsius. So this is something that tribals can use to get through those heat waves. Uh, another alternative is digging into mountains, which now have a, a temperature neutralizing effect uh, deep under mountains, which was supposed to be in the last build, but didn't actually work because I screwed up the code. So that works now. Next up is uh, fermenting. The method of beer production was always kind of crappy because you just go to the fermenting table and, or the brewing table and just brew some beer. It made, really made no sense because beer takes time to ferment. So this is how it works. You put a, uh, I'm gonna make some hops because I need the, the ingredients for this. On the brewing table, you put a produce wort bill and wort is unfermented beer, which is something I learned while creating this. In any case, so he just created the wort, which is this sort of brown liquid. And soon enough, someone is going to come and put that in one of these fermenting barrels. And it's essentially traditional, traditional beer making because that's kind of the environment you're in. You do it with wooden barrels, and there it is. The barrel is uh, one-fifth full, I believe, and it's uh, slowly fermenting, and there's no progress, so the color is quite dark. And as the progress uh, moves along, the color of the little progress bar will change to yellow. So the size of the progress bar indicates how full it is, and the color indicates how mature it is. So I'm just going to use debug to set the progress forward. Um, it does need to keep, be kept at a reasonable temperature. It can spoil at too high or too low. Uh, so you know, I've tried to make it reasonably accurate and interesting. And now I've set the, the progress forward to uh, 100%. So it's like we just waited several, several weeks for it to ferment. And now uh, he's gonna go and harvest the beer and now there's 15 beers, which can be drunk or sold or you know whatever you want. So that's, uh, that's the new beer production method and I hope it's more interesting. We have also made improvements to the uh, gear tab. It gives you a bit of readout information overall. So it just gives you the comfortable temperature range and the average armor uh, for various armor types. So the armor is still body part specific, but we just averaged it out based on the coverage of each body type or body part uh, to give you the, the overall. So here, here you can see this guy's comfortable temperature range is five to 36, and this guy's is minus nine to 46 because he's got a nice duster on. Um, or sorry, five to 32. So that's it. Next is a uh, quality of life improvement. Now you can drag to reorder mods. You don't click up and down. You just click and, and drag them to wherever you want. And uh, boom, there it is. It's right where you want it. So people have been asking for this, now you can do it. There have been a, a, a bunch of other smaller changes which I didn't shoot specific videos to uh, talk about. For example, raiders will steal a bit more often from you now. Uh, there's a new alert, need warm clothes which essentially alerts the player that winter's coming and they should be producing, producing uh, some warm clothes. Um, see here, trading has been uh, reworked a little bit. The, the traders generate more stock and, and it's a lot clearer what they'll accept and what they won't accept because it actually says on the trade screen 
what kind of trader they are and which items they aren't willing to accept. And something some of you will really love, you can now actually call and pay allies to send you traders if you really want one. So, you know, adding a little bit of options there for you guys and, and uh, increasing that ally interaction. So that is RimWorld Alpha 15. I really hope you guys like it. You know, I've tried to get this one out pretty quickly because I really wanted the, the tutorial in there. And uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, have a good time with it. I am Tynan Sylvester. I tweet at Tynan Sylvester. So go ahead and follow me on Twitter. And uh, the game is RimWorld and the website is Ludion.com. So thank you all very much. <laughs>